when protons flow spontaneously down their electrochemical gradient, energy is made available to do work. In mitochondria, chloroplasts, and aerobic bacteria, the electrochemical energy in the proton gradient drives the synthesis of ATP from ADP and inorganic phosphate. So let's now look at how the stored energy, the proton motive force, is harnessed to produce ATP for the energy needs of the cell. How is a concentration gradient of protons transformed into ATP? We have seen that electron transfer releases and the proton motive force conserves more than enough free energy of about 200 kJ per mole of electron pairs to drive the formation of a mole of ATP, which requires just about 50 kJ. Mitochondrial oxidative phosphorylation therefore poses no thermodynamic problem. But what is the chemical mechanism that couples proton flux with phosphorylation? This question was answered when Peter Michel, a British biochemist, was awarded the 1978 Nobel Prize for Chemistry for his groundbreaking breakthrough of the chemiosmotic mechanism of ATP synthesis. He coined this discovery as the chemiosmotic coupling hypothesis of oxidative phosphorylation, which eventually became one of the unifying principles of 20th century biology. The chemiosmotic model proposed by Peter Michel is the paradigm for this mechanism. We have seen that the transmembrane differences in proton concentration are the reservoir for the energy extracted from biological oxidation reactions. However, there was still a big piece of the puzzle missing in the chemical mechanism that couples proton flux with phosphorylation to produce ATP. This is where the chemiosmotic hypothesis comes in. According to the model, the electrochemical energy inherent in the difference in proton concentration and separation of charge across the inner mitochondrial membrane or the proton motive force drives the synthesis of ATP as protons flow passively back into the matrix through a proton pore associated with ATP synthase. Let us try to explain the chemiosmotic model. In this simple representation of the chemiosmotic theory applied to mitochondria, electrons from NADH and other oxidizable substrates pass through a chain of carriers arranged asymmetrically in the inner membrane. Electron flow is accompanied by proton transfer across the membrane, producing both a chemical gradient and an electrical gradient. The inner mitochondrial membrane, as we know, is impermeable to protons. Protons can re-enter the matrix only through proton-specific channels like the FO. The proton motive force that drives protons back into the matrix provides the energy for ATP synthesis, catalyzed by the F1 complex associated with FO of the ATP synthase complex. This is another look at the electron transport chain with the four complexes that we have studied. What is added here is a fifth complex, the ATP synthase, which can also be referred to as complex 5. ATP synthase, officially known as the FOF1 ATPase, is the enzyme complex that generates ATP. It is a multi-subunit enzyme containing an inner membrane portion, known as the FO, and a stalk and headpiece portion, the F1, that projects into the matrix. To continue, the ATP synthase has 12 C subunits in the membrane that form a rotor that is attached to a central asymmetric shaft composed of epsilon and gamma subunits. The headpiece in turn is composed of three alpha-beta subunit pairs. Each beta subunit contains a catalytic site for ATP synthesis. The headpiece is held stationary by a delta subunit attached to a long B subunit connected to a subunit A in the membrane. ATP synthase carries out rotational catalysis in which the flow of protons through FO causes each of three nucleotide binding sites and F1 to cycle from ADP plus inorganic phosphate bound to ATP bound to empty conformations. 
This way, reactive sites take turns in catalyzing ATP synthesis. The binding change or flip-flop mechanism theory or the conformational coupling hypothesis elucidated by Paul Boyer in the 1960s and 70s postulated that ATP synthesis is dependent on a conformational change in ATP synthase generated by rotation of the enzyme complex. The changes in the energy states of the different subunits causes a series of events that leads to the phosphorylation of ADP to ATP. This is an animated representation of the rotation of the FO portion of the ATP synthase causing conformational changes in the F1 portion or headpiece of the enzyme complex. One can see the entry of the raw materials, ADP and inorganic phosphate, and the release of ATP from the enzyme complex. The binding change mechanism is the key to rotational catalysis. A given beta subunit starts in the beta ADP conformation which binds ADP and inorganic phosphate from the surrounding medium. The subunit now changes conformation, assuming the beta ATP form that tightly binds and stabilizes ATP, bringing about the red equilibration of ADP plus inorganic phosphate with ATP on the enzyme surface. Finally, the subunit changes to the beta empty conformation, which is very low affinity for ATP the newly synthesized ATP leaves the enzyme surface. Another round of catalysis begins when this subunit again assumes the beta ADP form and binds ADP and inorganic phosphate. Here is another view of the binding change mechanism. The binding change mechanism involves the active site of a beta subunit cycling between three states. In the loose state, ADP and the phosphate enter the active site. The enzyme then undergoes a change in shape and forces these molecules together, with the active site in the resulting tight state binding the newly produced ATP molecule with very high affinity. Finally, the active site cycles back to the open state, releasing ATP and binding more ADP and phosphate, ready for the next cycle of ATP production. The conformational changes central to this mechanism are driven by the passage of protons to the FO portion of ATP synthase. This in turn turns the FO portion of ATP synthase leading to the conformational changes in the beta subunits of the F1 or head portion of the enzyme complex resulting to the phosphorylation of ADP to ATP. The phosphate oxygen ratio or PO ratio refers to the amount of ATP produced from the movement of two electrons through a defined electron transport chain, terminated by reduction of an oxygen atom. The PO ratio is dependent on the number of hydrogen ions transported outward across an electrochemical gradient and the number of protons which return inward through the membrane via an enzyme such as ATP synthase. Overall, each NADH donates two electrons, equivalent to the reduction of one-half of an O2 molecule. A generally but not universally accepted estimate of the stoichiometry of ATP synthesis is that four protons are pumped out at complex 1, four protons at complex 3, and two at complex 4. It has been studied and accepted that ATP synthase complex would need four protons translocated for one ATP synthesized from ADP and inorganic phosphate. Let's explore this important concept in greater detail. Looking at the electron transport chain, a total of 10 protons will be translocated out to the intermembrane space when NADH is oxidized as electron donor at complex 1. With four protons translocated for each ATP synthesized, an estimated 2.5 ATPs are formed for each NADH oxidized, resulting to a PO ratio of 2.5. On the other hand, with succinate as electron donor via complex 2, a total of six protons are translocated through complexes 3 and 4 resulting to 1.5 ATPs for each of 
FADH2 containing flavoproteins oxidized, resulting to a PO ratio of 1.5. Modern biochemists and academicians now use the PO values of 2.5 and 1.5, but the values 3.0 and 2.0 are still common in the biochemical literature. Moving on, we have learned that the inner mitochondrial membrane is generally impermeable to charged species and other molecules. How then can ADP, ATP, and phosphate ions move in and out through it? There are two specific transport systems that translocate ADP and inorganic phosphate into the matrix and ATP out to the intermembrane space. The adenine nucleotide translocase, integral to the inner membrane, transports ADP negative 3 in the intermembrane space and transports it into the matrix in exchange for an ATP negative 4 molecule that is simultaneously transported outward into the intermembrane space. Because this antiporter moves 4 negative charges out for every 3 moved in, its activity is favored by the transmembrane electrochemical gradient which gives the matrix a net negative charge. Similar to ATP synthase, the proton motive force drives ATP-ADP exchange. A second membrane transport system essential to oxidative phosphorylation is phosphate translocase, which promotes symport of one dihydrogen phosphate or H2PO4 negative and one hydrogen ion into the matrix. Moving on, the NADH dehydrogenase of the inner mitochondrial membrane of animal cells can accept electrons only from the NADH in the matrix. Given that the inner membrane is not permeable to NADH, how then can the NADH generated by glycolysis in the cytosol be reoxidized to NAD positive via the respiratory chain? Special shuttle systems carry reducing equivalents from cytosolic NADH into mitochondria by an indirect route. These are the malate, aspartate, and glycerol 3 phosphate shuttle systems. We will just enumerate them here and not go into the details. Suffice it to know that special shuttle systems do exist for this purpose of NADH transport through the impermeable inner mitochondrial membrane. Oxidative phosphorylation is a highly crucial process that it needs to be finely regulated. The rate of respiration or oxygen consumption in the mitochondria is tightly regulated. It is generally limited by the availability of ADP as a substrate for phosphorylation. The intracellular concentration of ADP is one measure of the energy status of cells. Another related measure is the mass action ratio of the ATP-ADP system, which is the ATP concentration over the product of the concentrations of ADP and inorganic phosphate. Normally, this ratio is very high, so the ATP-ADP system is almost fully phosphorylated. When the rate of some energy requiring process, like protein synthesis for example, increases, the rate of breakdown of ATP to ADP and inorganic phosphate increases, lowering the mass action ratio. With more ADP available for oxidative phosphorylation, the rate of respiration increases causing the generation of ATP. This continues until the mass action ratio returns to its normal high level at which point respiration slows down again. The rate of oxidation of cellular fuels is regulated with such sensitivity and precision that the ratio fluctuates only slightly in most tissues even during extreme variations in energy demand. In short, ATP is formed only as fast as it is used in energy requiring cellular activities. Lastly, the relative concentrations of ATP and ADP control not only the rates of electron transfer and oxidative phosphorylation, but also the rates of the citric acid cycle by ruvate oxidation and glycolysis. Whenever ATP consumption increases, the rate of electron transfer and oxidative phosphorylation also increases. Simultaneously, the rate of pyruvate oxidation via the citric acid cycle increases, increasing the flow of electrons into the respiratory chain. These events can in turn 
evoke an increase in the rate of glycolysis and subsequently increasing the rate of pyruvate formation. When conversion of ADP to ATP lowers the ADP con concentration, acceptor control slows electron transfer and thus slows oxidative phosphorylation as well. Let us further investigate the regulation of the ATP producing pathways. This diagram shows the interlocking regulation of glycolysis, pyruvate oxidation, the citric acid cycle, and oxidative phosphorylation by the relative concentrations of ATP, ADP, AMP, and by NADH. High ATP concentrations or low ADP and AMP concentrations produce low rates of glycolysis, pyruvate oxidation, acetate oxidation via the citric acid cycle, and oxidative phosphorylation. All four pathways are accelerated when the use of ATP and the formation of ADP, AMP, and inorganic phosphate increases. The interlocking of glycolysis and the citric acid cycle by citrate, which inhibits glycolysis, supplements the action of the adenine nucleotide system. In addition, increased levels of NADH and acetyl coenzyme A also inhibit the oxidation of pyruvate to acetyl CoA, and the high NADH NAD ratio inhibits the dehydrogenase reactions of the citric acid cycle. Thank you for watching this episode in this playlist. Check out the other videos in this playlist and please do subscribe to our channel and click the bell to be notified of new video episodes that will be regularly uploaded.